Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video we saw that the larger the phase angle between the current and the voltage, the greater the complex power, therefore the greater the current requirement to make the, the load work. In other words, the power requirement of the load is going to be a fixed amount because of the resistance in the load, and if we had a large phase angle between the current and the voltage, meaning a smaller power factor, we would require more current in order to make that happen, in order to provide the power required by the load. And we learned that if we could reduce that, power that angle, that phase angle, in other words, increase the power factor, we wouldn't need quite as much current. Well, that's what we call the power factor correction. We're going to try to reduce the phase angle in such a way that we can provide the same amount of power to the load with less current to the load. How do we do that? Well, it turns out we can accomplish that by putting a capacitor parallel to the load. Hmm. At first you say, well, wait a minute, if we provide a second pad, wouldn't that require additional current? Because after all, the current here provided to the load is not going to be the sum of the current to the load itself plus the current to the capacitor. And therefore, aren't we increasing the current requirement? But the answer is actually no, surprisingly, is because the current to the capacitor is going to be at a different phase than the current to the load. Matter of fact, the current to the load is always going to be a lagging current, and if we put a capacitor in parallel to the load, that current is going to be 90 degrees ahead of the voltage. And so now we see that there's a greater than 90 degree difference between the current to the load and the current to the capacitor. So therefore, actually putting a capacitor there reduces the current requirement. You can see how that works here by doing a vector sum. If we add the load current to the capacitor current, we now have the current provided to the whole component right here. And that current is now going to be less because we now have a smaller phase angle. Notice that the larger initial phase angle is now, now being reduced to a smaller phase angle, we'll call it the final phase angle, and so therefore the power factor initially, and let me put a little i there because it doesn't depend on the time, so the power factor initially was the cosine of the initial phase angle, the power factor finally is the cosine of the final phase angle, and realize since this is a small angle, angle this will be a larger quantity and therefore the, the final power factor will be greater than the initial power factor and therefore the current supplied to the whole component right here is going to be less than the current required to the load. We've actually reduced the current requirement and therefore it's a more efficient way in producing power to the load. So here's going to be the resistor in the load that will actually consume the power. There's the inductor which is typically what we find in loads that Loads tend to be inductive in nature, and therefore we can offset the larger current requirement by putting a capacitor in parallel to the original load, therefore reducing the current requirement in order to provide the same amount of power to the load. And that's what we call the power factor correction. Now we're going to learn how to do that, how to pick the correct capacitor in order for a particular circuit with particular parameters to have a bigger power factor and therefore a more efficient a more efficient setup requiring less current and that's what it's about